What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 best times WWE wrestlers went off script. It's always dope when sometimes the wrestlers have to pull an audible, they have to go off script, and it seems more believable in what they're saying. I usually prefer when they do go off script. It makes it just that it gives it that little bit more realism to whatever story promo or segment they're talking about so we're gonna check this out it's gonna be a dope video appreciate all the love and support road to 60k and let's get right into it well this is the time where we go off the script uh -huh, mm -hmm. One of the criticisms of modern WWE programming is that the product is far too scripted. Fans often complain that promos feel unnatural and they yep. seem written by someone who doesn't even seem to know too much about wrestling. Sports entertainment right. slash pro wrestling world I come That's from. Sports entertainment. That's not where you come from. You know, pro wrestling is, you know, what my dad did. After all, most of the greatest promos and segments of all. And this is why AEW is the home of pro wrestling time have elements of unscripted material in them but now it's rare to see a wwe superstar go off script yep it's a rather risky move for them to do as consequences of doing this can really impact their position on the card or even get them released now there have been a number of occasions where a superstar has gone off script and as a result it's made the segment even better but again these instances are still rare particularly as the wwe prefers an overly scripted format for all their main shows but which were the best off script moments well join us now as wrestlemania looks at 10 of the best times that wwe superstars going off script, went off script make sure to subscribe and, and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling better, videos and opinion. follow us on facebook for exclusive lists that's just in my opinion Number 10, Paul Heyman goes off script and performs a 10 bell salute for Daniel Bryan. Wow. One of the top rivals for Roman Reigns since turning heel in 2020 was Daniel Bryan. This the two was, had a number of matches, including a title versus career match, which happened to be the last time that Bryan appeared on WWE programming. On the following week's SmackDown, Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Jey Uso came down to the ring, and Heyman performed a 10 bell salute for Bryan to represent his departure from WWE. Mm -hmm. This element of Heyman's promo received a widespread praise from fans, and it was yeah. even praised by WWE management backstage. Now, interestingly enough, this part of the segment was entirely unscripted, and Heyman simply improvised it without any prior warning to anyone, even Reigns or Jey Uso. Now, although a talent doing something of this nature is never encouraged by WWE management, Heyman is one of the most gifted promo guys. This was this was a fantastic segment. You can tell Roman didn't know what was really going on because he was starting to break character because he was starting to laugh as he was bowing his head. This was a good segment, built up great heel heat for Roman Reigns at the time, man. And Paul Heyman is one of those guys. He knows how to deliver a promo, so he doesn't need a script. And this worked. This was fantastic. In the history of WWE, so he's allowed to say virtually whatever he likes. Number nine, Alexa Bliss decides to bring a coffee cup down to the ring. Got my coffee. Have you seen? Oh. Oh, thank you. In 2019, Alexa Bliss debuted a moment of bliss. This was an interview segment designed to keep Bliss away from the ring for a brief period where she recovered from a concussion. One of the key parts of the interview segments was that Bliss would have a coffee cup on her table and she would even bring the coffee cup down to the ringside area with her whenever she accompanied Nikki Cross for a match. Now, according to Bliss, the inclusion of the coffee cup into her character was 100% unscripted and she mm. simply believed Vince McMahon would like it. She informed TV Insider that, I knew I was going to be ringside for a particular match and look disinterested so I just brought my coffee with me oh okay welcome back to fall that seems like a uh, understandable uh, uh, unscripted moment it became a thing after that because I just stood ringside drinking my coffee nobody really has stood ringside drinking coffee so I thought when I went backstage Vince would either like it or fire me <laughs> they ended up liking it number eight Rick Blair decides to cut a promo on Randy Orton now, leading up to Randy Orton's WWE title showdown with Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam in 2020, Orton would bring back the beloved legend killer persona. He would take out a number of legends yeah. such as The Big Show, Christian, and Shawn Michaels. I was loving this run. It was just bringing me back to the, the legend killer, man. The guy was out here taking down legends and punting them. Man, this was I was enjoying this version of Randy Orton. 
The legend that Orton targeted was his former Evolution stablemate, Ric Flair. Orton and Flair would have a great segment which was filled with continuity and tremendous promo work. However, it was revealed by Orton that Flair was never supposed to talk in the promo exchange and that Flair completely went off script. Speaking to Inside the Ropes, Orton revealed, Rick knows that and I know that and I'll tell you what, he was never supposed to grab the microphone from me that night. He was just supposed to say a few things under his breath that the handheld camera in the ring may or may not pick up. You were supposed to see our facial expressions and then get an idea he was bringing me back in and eventually we had the hug and I turned on him. When he grabbed the mic I was thinking, ah, come on Rick, you're not supposed to grab the mic. But then he went on to cut the promo and it was very touching. Number seven, That's dope. Cesaro rips up a- that, that was dope. That was, that was, that was, Rick is Rick even though at this present moment he's kind of, he's kind of cancelled right now. But uh, yeah man, outside of his- um, things that he's done in the past rick is rick flair man if there's anybody that can cut a promo just like that off script it's him beach ball of course Over i know the about this one years, it's been a lot of people know about this one. to hijack the show when there's yep. a match or segment that really doesn't interest them one mm -hmm. of the ways they've done this is by playing with a beach, beach ball, ball in the crowd and when fans did this at SummerSlam in 2017 this didn't sit well with one particular superstar Ooh. cesaro was in the middle of a match when he was teaming with sheamus against the duo of seth rollins and dean ambrose in the middle of the match fans began to play with a beach ball but this led to cesaro storming into the crowd grabbing the ball and tearing it apart the yep. moment was completely unplanned and according to Cesaro, he received praise backstage for doing it as management obviously don't like fans hijacking their yeah. show. Number that six, was, The Rock smart. interacts with a fan. That was a smart thing to do because, you know, they were being assholes at the time. They were, so he was like, give me the beach ball. Let's get back to the match. I, I like I liked when he did that dressed as Hulk Hogan. And when The Rock appears on WWE television, he is traditionally allowed free reign to discuss whatever he likes. Uh -huh. If he is given a script, he will be given bullet points rather than a full-fledged written script. However, when The Rock appeared on Raw in 2016, he did something that really didn't sit well with Vince McMahon. During his appearance, The Rock would interact with fans dressed as wrestlers at ringside. One of these fans was dressed as the controversial Hulk Hogan. Now, Hogan had been fired from the WWE mm -hmm. the year prior after he underwent a racist rant in a video. Now according to SES Scoops, Vince as well as other key members of WWE management threw a huge tantrum backstage as they knew there was nothing they could do about the situation and they simply had to witness it play out firsthand. Mm -hmm. Number 5 Xavier Woods cites frustrations in an off script rant. The WWE draft is usually a hot topic backstage with the WWE roster. It's been reported that well uh the wwe draft is actually happening this week this friday as of me recording it unfortunately i won't be able to check it out because uh the person i'm dating is actually coming into town to houston for the very first time so i'm gonna be showing her around town this weekend and i, I won't be able to check it out but i will be able to uh talk about it on monday that will be the next time i'll actually be able to bring it up and discuss things on what happened on 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 the draft on friday and then i'll also talk about what happens on the draft on monday this coming monday so be patient with me guys uh you know i do have a life outside of youtube but i definitely will make sure i talk about the draft and i'm pretty sure you guys will hit me up on instagram and let me know who got drafted to smackdown this week so in the past that superstars aren't aware of where they're being drafted to and they find out the same time as fans watching at home. In 2019's draft, Xavier Woods was frustrated that a number of superstars who appeared on his Up Up Down Down YouTube channel had been moved to Raw. Woods was a Smackdown superstar which therefore made collaborations a lot more difficult moving forward. Whilst appearing on the KO show, Woods began to shoot on the outcome of the draft during his promo. And he would state, honestly, on top of that, with all this superstar shakeup nonsense, we took like 80% of the up, up, down, down roster. And what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to make a successful YouTube channel. They're taking everybody from me. And honestly, if I don't see Tyler Breeze on SmackDown by the end of the show, I would lose my mind. Now, according to Dave Meltzer, these comments from Woods weren't in the initial script. Mm. Woods had decided to go off script to cite his frustrations on live television. It was unclear if Woods was punished for going off script. However, he did manage to deliver the rant in a way which was in line with his WWE television persona, which mm -hmm. was an extremely smart thing for a multiple tag team champion to do. Number four, Ric Flair's controversial line. A SmackDown before 2016's brand split was a taped show. This meant that they could edit out anything they didn't want airing. 
However, thanks to a rise in social media, as well as everyone in the arena having a camera phone, any instances of mistakes or superstars going off script were usually captured on camera. Mm -hmm. This was the case during a promo segment between Ric Flair, Charlotte Flair and Natalia, who were all guests on the Ambrose Asylum. During the segment, Flair got carried away with a rant about beating Natalia's uncle Bret Hart, and during his rant, Flair informed Natalia that she should kill uh, This non-PG line from Flair was quite right. Oh, I did not know this. Oh, <laughs> did, did, wait, yo. During his rant, Flair informed Natalia that she should kill yourself. Uh, this non PG. Did he say kill yourself? No way. He didn't just say that. Flair informed Natalia that she should kill yourself. Uh, this non PG oh line from Flair my, was he quite. He did say kill yourself. <laughs> He pulled a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 lobby rant. Go kill yourself, kid. <laughs> rightly edited out, but it wasn't before long that the clip was distributed all over social media, so the majority of the fans were fully aware of Flair going drastically off script. Number three, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar interact with Jerry Lawler. Oh my god, bro. That's... Rick Flair just... He, he just don't give a damn. I just said you and Brock Lesnar just made a believer out of me. On the 6th January 2020 edition of Raw, Brock Lesnar declared I think I did that he would enter the Royal live. Rumble match as WWE Champion. Mm -hmm. Following his major announcement, Lesnar along with Paul Heyman walked over to the Raw commentary team and this is when Lesnar put his hand on Lawler's shoulder and Heyman informed Lawler that he was to say nice things about the WWE mm -hmm. Champion. Now according to Lawler, this part of the segment wasn't planned and he had zero idea that it was going to happen. He would discuss the unscripted moment on his podcast and revealed... So all we can see is nothing. We could just see the cameras and we just assume that they're, you know, they're seeing us and everything. And all of a sudden I feel this hand on my shoulder and I'm like, what the heck? And it's Brock Lesnar. And he's just kind of brushing aside and he's walking past me. And then I look over to my right and there's, there of course is uh, Paul Heyman. And, you know, he said, come on, come on, King, talk nice about me, talk nice about me. <laughs> that's, that's, and I mean, that, that was, was just dope. totally off the top of his head, and I had no idea they were going to be there. So I don't. I saw a picture on Twitter that somebody put up, and you could tell from my facial expression that I had no idea that was about to happen. Number two, that was Dean cool. Ambrose goes that was a nice little during his baby little face moment. turn in 2019. A Dean Ambrose's heel turn in 2018 was a complete disaster. Yeah. Fans had no desire to see Ambrose as a babyface, and the nature of the storyline that he had with Seth Rollins was rather tasteless, even by WWE standards. To make amends, WWE would turn Ambrose back to a babyface on the road to WrestleMania 35, and to do this, Ambrose would confront Rollins in the ring, and he would inform Rollins to slay the beast. This was a reference to Rollins' upcoming match against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 35. However, this line was completely unscripted. According to Dave Meltzer, WWE can we, oh man, bro, they 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 ruined him with this fucking Bane mask on. I was just like, oh Jesus, they had a good heel turn and they they botched it completely. Planned something else entirely, but Ambrose wasn't feeling it, so he simply decided to do his own thing. This was around the time that Ambrose was getting set to leave the WWE, mm -hmm. so he felt invincible, and he certainly wasn't going to say something that he didn't feel was a right fit for his character. And number one, Roman Reigns tells the fans to shut up. A Roman Reigns during his babyface run was often met with a negative response oh, from for fans. Sure. It was rather common for Reigns to simply ignore the negative response mm -hmm. as he was a top babyface in the WWE and WWE simply didn't want to draw attention to the negativity. However, there was one occasion in 2016 when Reigns just had enough of the crowd being against him and would fire back at the crowd with a completely unscripted line in his promo. This took place during a promo segment Reigns was having with WWE Champion Dean Ambrose. As during the segment, the crowd began to chant, You can't wrestle at Reigns. <laughs> this was when Reigns decided to go off script and state, For all the dudes chanting that I can't wrestle, calm down, relax, take a sip of your beer, and shut your mouth. Yup, I remember that. And that, that's the Roman we wanted. Right there. Not scripted, believable. That's the Roman we wanted. Right there. It was right there. All they had to do is just let him be himself. Oh my God, man. Imagine if we would have had the Roman we got now then. Gold. To Reigns' credit, 
It worked as the crowd toned it down quite dramatically following his outburst, and Reigns and Ambrose were able to continue the promo without being heckled by the fans in attendance. But there you have it folks, 10 of the best times you, man, WWE superstars were- When they go off script, the product's better sometimes. The Ric Flair part, uh, can't, uh, I mean I know us growing up, you know, playing online games, we heard go kill yourself all the time, but when you hear it on screen and especially saying it to a woman, uh, I don't know about that flair. Um, but yeah, man, hey, most of the time, the all scripted moments are usually the best moments in WWE, in professional wrestling, in my humble opinion. But comment down below, let me know if you guys agree with me that WWE needs to let their wrestlers go off script a little bit more. Give them bullet points, let them create. I think that's what AEW does, you know. Uh, I feel like in AEW, if you're not a good promo, they'll, you know, they'll script you a little bit more. But they want you to come off more believable. And that's what I get from AEW. With WWE, I don't get that. At least not with too many wrestlers. I feel like some wrestlers get privileges and then the other wrestlers, they got to go verbatim from the script. And I think you can work with that even with a PG rating because WWE is still PG and AEW's TV 14. You can still go off script and it works. You can still do it. Just, you know, make sure they're not saying too many wild things for TV regulation purposes. And it can still work. So, comment down below. Let me know if you guys think they should go off script more. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.